Hello and welcome to this Sonic Lab review of the Sonicware Lo-Fi 12 XT. This is the supercharged version of the previous Lo-Fi 12. It's a portable sampling groove box with 64 megabytes of RAM with unlimited SD card storage, 8 tracks and 20 voices of polyphony. There's also a capable sequencer with parameter automation and a background mixtape feature which records directly to the card. It's worth bearing in mind that I shot my review on the original firmware, but a new version has just been released. Um, as I had a really fun time and no real problem uh, working with the Lo-Fi 12 XT, I didn't feel I needed to reshoot anything, but I've kind of noted the most important new features here. So you might be asking how I uh, created this track. Well, really, uh, I'll show you. I made a number of patterns. I've got a sampled back in track, uh, which is just the drums, a little bit of synth and my vocals. Then I've got my PWM bass. On that I've got a little bit of chorus, I've got some filtering as well with a, a filter envelope which as you can see it's a pretty kind of a sharp filter envelope. Let's tweak the filter a bit. So fun for all the family there with uh, with the filter, which is a, a few different modes actually. It's got a low pass, a high pass. And of course a band pass. Everyone loves a band pass where you can change the width of it. Let's make it quite wide. So I thought that was quite a good way, you know, of, uh, of showing off the filter. This is a, a bell sound from the Korg Poly 800. We recently did an episode uh, of Sonic Talk on the Poly 800. This is my favourite preset from that synth. It's just this lovely, charming, naive bell sound. I've added a bit of reverb to this sound so you can kind of tweak the parameters of it. You can tweak those per step, I believe. You can automate most things, um, <laughs> like the cutoff, uh, envelopes, modulation amounts. You can automate the sample per step. In addition to knob automation, further modulation is provided by two LFOs per track. There's loads of different uh, modulation destinations for the LFOs, but these effects parameters aren't included on that list. 
which is a little bit of a shame. I'd have liked to see this pre-delay um, maybe controllable by an LFO because, you know, it's it becomes almost a warbly kind of chorus. So I'd like uh, parameter A of the effects to be an LFO destination. Shall we see what the destinations are? So here they are. There's pitch, sample start, sample length. We'll get to those in a bit because there's a lot of fun you can have. Filter frequency, filter resonance, LFO parameters, the envelope, the send delay and the send reverb. So you can change the send amounts to each um, of the delay and the reverb, which is really useful. But I'd like to be able to modulate those effects parameters in real time. Because I'm weird and I like weird stuff. So <laughs> the last part of this patch is a little um, charming R sound. Outside of fancy automation, there are a number of basic parameters per step, like note, velocity, roll, sweep up and down, that's how I do my bass slides. You can also transpose the entire pattern. There is quite a lot of crust available on the Lo-Fi 12 XT. You can actually choose how crusty you want it. <laughs> there are two main sampling modes. It's either 16-bit 12 kilohertz or 16-bit 24 kilohertz. And then you can switch on 12-bit mode um, instead of 16-bit mode, which is pretty cool. See, there's 12-bit on or off here. By the way, any red step is a note that you've put in. Any yellow step is where there's been some automation recorded in. We've just added modulation to that one step and nothing else there. We could do the same on another step. Kind of silly, but it shows you the kind of modulation power. And I'll do some more of that later. Some more kind of musical examples. If you press sound a couple of times and put the voice in slice mode, boom, 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 hit slice, you can see how the sample has been sliced up. You can do like an automatic location and it'll put some slices in for you. Uh, but I always find that any software or hardware that does this tends not to put the slices exactly where I want them. So you can actually uh, pick any slice and move it with B. And you can even zoom in just to get those slice points bang on. So in this example, I'm going to kind of sequence those slices into a kind of rocky breakbeat kind of vibe. Let's go. Each slice is a note when you use slice mode. But if you just want to modulate the start point of a sample, using one of the knobs per step. You can do that too. So here's an example. This is one of the samples from the song you just heard, but I haven't put any slices in. I'm just modulating the start point of the sample. It's slightly trickier to, you know, tune in, but you can do it.
Random mode is quite good for giving you different variations. I'm doing a number of things on this bass line. I am automating the bit crusher rate on these four steps together. And I've got a bit of bit crusher and a sweep on this step. As you can see, it's going down two octaves with an exponential curve with the speed of 70, you can change the curve of the sweep logarithmic, linear and exponential Although I prefer to pop some triggers in and then uh, use the knob to change the note values, there is a kind of chromatic pad mode where you can play 15 of the light up pads in a selected scale. You can actually record external MIDI into the sequencer and then vary the quantize amount from 0 to 100. Idea generator there. And by the way, each track can be set to a different MIDI channel and control other gear. You can filter out notes or MIDI CCs too. There's also a sweep on this little um, string part, which I really like. It's got a sort of haunted uh, house kind of vibe to it. So if you look at this first note, it's a one octave sweep up with an exponential curve and it's set to the longest possible speed for its sweep. Granular fun is possible. It's not a specialist granular synth, but with a few tricks you can get kind of cloudy granular kind of textures. Here's one.
so I triggered the sample loads and loads of times really quickly. Uh, used an LFO to the sample start point and then um, added a bit of delay and reverb to get kind of a granular cloud texture. While we're at it, let's, uh, let's just record a sample using the onboard microphone. You know, I'm actually not one really for sampling into samplers. My workflow with samplers has always been to use MIDI sample dump. And that is kind of a valid old school workflow. Lots of people did it back in the day. But I know I'd, I'd be strung up if I didn't actually sample using this sampler, so I'm going to do it. You can plug external things into the line-in ports, but there's a handy little microphone that you can use to sample on the go, and it doesn't sound too bad, to be honest. Sampling! Let's hit it. Change the start point a bit. I thought I'd show you the difference between a few different ways of importing the samples into the Lo-Fi 12 XT. If you already have 12 kilohertz or 24 kilohertz WAV files and bung them on the memory card, you can just load them up, basically. If you go to browse, there's my Expander Beans folder. And there's the samples. They're the pre converted 24 kilohertz samples I had lying around. Now, if you'd like to convert higher sample rates, then you can do. Using your PC, pop them in a special convert folder on the SD card. This was just a 44.1 kHz sample that I converted using the Lo-Fi 12 itself. And this is a file that I converted myself. There's not much difference, but there is a small difference, I feel. I also thought it would be fun to convert this loop to Amiga format, import it into Octomed and use its special boost feature to see what happens, see if it reclaimed some of the high end that's lost. Now this has to be 8 bit, not 12. So you get a little bit of quantization noise, but this is how the Amiga sounds. Conversely, the Lo-Fi 12 has a treble boost effect, but it's not quite as pronounced as this Amiga trick. So this is without the maximizer. And then bring in a little bit more. You can reclaim a bit of top end. While I'm here, I might try a couple more effects. Wow and flutter, 
gives a kind of old tape effect. Let's try this on a more melodic sound. Very haunted in a kind of a 80s childhood trauma way. <laughs> so let's ask the question, will it weird? Well, yes, it will weird. With all the automation, all the effects, you can get some pretty crazy results. I'm going to change the sounds on some of the steps just by automation. Hold down the step. And this is all just on one track. Let's add the ring mod. As a little cute bonus, you can assemble a mixtape. It will record to the SD card. You can change the quality of the cassette. So that's DAT. Type 2. I used to get Type 2 tapes at the pound shop. Type 1, old type 1, stereo micro cassette, and a micro cassette. I think I really like the type 1. Something's occurred to me in that the Lo-Fi 12 doesn't essentially sound that Lo-Fi to me. To me, the Lo-Fi 12 just sounds nice. It sounds like samplers should sound. Apparently it automatically, you know, records to the SD card. So, there were a couple of niggles when I first made my first project. I don't know why, but it took ages to initialize the first project. It was there doing something for a good minute. Since then though, when I switch it on, it only takes, you know, five to 10 seconds to load everything up. I would like to see a wave shaper effect, a zero hertz wave shaper with a few different waves. And I like the LFOs to go to audio rates. They currently go up to 30 hertz, which isn't enough. <laughs> the mega synthesis goes up to about 100 at least, I think. So let's have some faster LFOs, please. So it's 429 pounds in this lovely Akai retro color scheme, or it's 399 pounds in black. You do get a power adapter with it, which is cool. I've had an absolute blast with the unit. Um, I might even try and work it into a live setup at some point. Like, it's certainly more portable than my workstation, my huge keyboard. I think all that's left is 
to pit it against an absolute 12-bit classic, a sampler that barely needs an introduction, the Akai S700. So thanks for watching, I've been Paulie Alex Bow for Sonic Lab, see you next time.